Hello folks, it's Mr Neil here and in this video we're going to be looking at modular programming from the Software Design and Development Unit of Higher Computing Science. From the SQA course specification we will focus predominantly on implementation, looking at functions and procedures. We will also touch upon parameter passing and the data flow from the design element of this unit. By the end of this session you'll be able to explain why we use modular programming, identify functions and procedures, write programs that utilise functions and procedures, and identify the data flow of a modular program. When people are learning to code, we all begin by writing sequential programs. We might loop occasionally or branch off for an if statement similar to the program on the right, but essentially a sequential program runs from the first line to the last line. But in reality, professional programmers don't write in that way, and professional programs are not written in this way. Professional programmers like to reuse code that they've previously written. This saves them time when they're developing new programs. If a part of a program performs a complex task, programmers will separate that code and write it in a separate module. And this is where we get the term modular programming. These modules are then called by the main part of the program when they're required. Let's have a look at how we implement modular programming when we're using Python. Here is a sequential program. It takes in two numbers, multiplies them together, and then displays them to the user. We're going to write a modular program that does a similar task. The first thing we need to do is we need to create our first module. In Python, when we're creating modules, we define a module by writing def. We then give our module a name. It is good practice to start your module names with capital letters to distinguish them from variable names. We are going to call this function getNum. You'll notice I've put an opening and closing set of brackets there. This module requires no additional information to function at this stage, so we're going to leave those brackets closed. We're then going to press enter and you'll notice that we are indented. Anything that happens within a module has to be indented. We're now going to ask the user to input two numbers. Once we've got our two numbers, we're then going to return them to the main program. We're now going to create another function that's going to multiply these two numbers together. So we'll call this one def multi number. And in this case, this sub program is going to require two numbers that it will multiply together. And then we're going to multiply them together and return the answer to the main program. Lastly, we're going to have a sub-program that will print the answer. And in order for this to work, it will need the answer. We don't need to add a return statement to this module because this is not returning a value to the rest of the program. This means that getNum and multiNum are functions and print ants is a procedure. Now that we've got all the modules our program needs, we're going to add in the main program. It's always a good idea to add in a comment to clearly define where your main program starts. In our main program, we're then going to call each of our modules in turn. We're going to start by calling getNum. GetNum requires no additional information to work, so we put some empty brackets in. However, it does return the value number one and number two to the main program. So we're going to insert num1, num2 equals. And what happens here is number1 will be returned into this variable and number2 will be returned into this variable. We're then going to call a multinum and it requires num1 and num2 to work and these values will be passed in. And it will return answer to our screen. And then we need to print ants, and it requires the answer to operate. And if we hit run, as far as the user is concerned, there is no concernable difference to our program. Now you might be wondering, why have I gone to the lengths of turning this program into modular? And you're quite right, it's actually longer when it's modular than when it was sequential but we are just getting to grips with the benefits of modular program. This program could be required to take in two numbers for a variety of different contexts that require them to be multiplied together. 
So we could actually level up this program to make it more customizable. We could say that our get number function requires a message for each of our numbers. And we can replace them in here. And then our get number, we could say enter length and enter width. Now when we run it, these values enter length and enter width are passed in to message one and message two and we're given appropriate messages. Enter length 23, enter width 34, we get 782. We can make these variables here more meaningful. So for example, number one is the length and number two is the width. And of course, we need to make sure they match within our main program. And again, when we run it, there is no concernable difference to the user. You'll notice here that the variable names down the bottom within our main program do not match the parameter names within each module declaration. And this is to do with parameter passing. When we define a module, we create the formal parameters that we will use whilst we're defining the function or procedure. When we call that said function or procedure, we insert in the actual parameters, the actual values that we are going to use. So in this case, the actual value that we're going to use is length and width because that is important to our program. In this case, the actual message one that we're going to use is enter length. Now, no matter what programming language you choose, the following applies to every programming language that has modularity. Mainly, starting, there are two different types of modules. There are functions and there are procedures. A function is a module that carries out its specific task and then returns values to the main program. So looking on the right hand side of the screen, you can see that we have got a function called getNum. We know it is a function because it returns the values num1 and num2 to our main program. We then have multinum, which again we know is a function because it returns the answer to the rest of the program. A procedure carries out its specific task, but does not return any values back to the main program. So in this case, print ants is a procedure because there is no return statement, therefore it is not returning any values to our main program. Whether a module is a function or a procedure, there are two main parts to both of them. The declaration block and the call statement. The declaration block is when the subprogram is created. And you can see in Python that we declare modules by defining them using DEF. We then call that module in the main program. And we have identified our main program by putting in an internal comment to make sure that element of our program is clear. When we're working with modularity, we have parameters. And parameters is a special kind of variable used in modules to refer to the values that are passed into it and any values that might be passed out of it. By using parameters, we aid modularity. Formal parameters are used when we're declaring a module and they represent the values that will be used. So for example, in getNum, our formal parameters are message one and message two. They are formal because we don't actually know what they're going to be, but we know that there'll be content within them. The actual parameters are used when we call the module and we specify the values that we want to use. So in this case, on line 18, when get num is called, our actual parameters are enter length and enter width. From the main program, we can identify the data flow. The data flow shows us the parameters that are passed into and out of each module. So on the left, you can see that the get num function returns a value length and width. In the middle, the multinum function requires the values length and width, returning answer, and the print answer procedure requires the value answer. I'd like you to pause the video now and try and create a program that will calculate the volume of the cylinder by reusing some of the elements from the program on the right hand side. 
If you're using Python, you'll be able to access this code using the REPL link at the bottom. You could, of course, complete this challenge. You could, of course, complete this task in the programming language that you use. Pause the video now and try and complete this task. Here we have a possible solution. This solution is based on using the previous program. You'll see that we still have a function called getNum that gets two numbers from the user. However, on line 21, you'll see that we've specified the actual parameters as enter radius and enter height. We then have a new function called cylinder volume that requires a value for R and a value for H. These are the formal parameters. It then calculates the volume pi times R squared times H and returning V. On line 22, when we call the cylinder volume function, the radius and height become the actual parameters and the value for V is stored in volume. Hopefully now, you are able to explain why we use modular program. You can identify functions and procedures. You can write programs that utilize functions and procedures. And you can identify the data flow of a modular program.